Good happy Thursday morning, May 14, 2020. I'm Riley King and welcome to this Thursday morning edition of Good Morning, New Hampshire. Rise and shine everyone, let's get this Thursday off to a good start. Sit back, relax. Grab your cup of coffee and enjoy some Good Morning New Hampshire, where we have a little bit of everything for you in this program. But first, we're going to start with the news. We're going to start with your local news first. Let's begin. First up, eight new COVID-19 deaths reported in New Hampshire. Antrival Drug Remdesivir Distributed. 13 New Hampshire hospitals given dose of drug that has shown promise in fighting COVID-19. Let's take a listen to that video from WMU News 9, Tyler Dumont. When you cut lawns for a living, reliability matters. The Kubota commercial lineup with purpose-built mowers like this. More equipment to protect people from COVID-19 and a drug to treat people who have it arrived in New Hampshire this week. As businesses continue to flex up open voluntarily, the state has made sure that masks will be available to them. Governor Chris Sununu says the state has already handed out millions of masks with plans to continue adding to its PPE stockpile. Earlier this week, we secured another 7 million masks. They arrived here in New Hampshire, which will be sent to healthcare facilities and small businesses across the state, and we expect another 10 million masks to arrive later this week. Medical gowns are in high demand nationwide, but the governor says the Granite State will receive another 50,000 this week thanks to two local companies, Circular Blue in Bradford and Coltec in Unity. The governor used the acquisition to tout public-private partnerships. And in total, uh, approximately $25 million has now gone uh, towards New Hampshire companies manufacturing, procuring, and securing PPE uh, for the state of New Hampshire. Meanwhile, the state didn't pay anything for a federal shipment of remdesivir, an investigational drug just authorized by the FDA to treat adults and children with severe COVID-19 symptoms. 400 vials of the medication arrived Tuesday and were distributed same day to 13 hospitals around the state, according to Health Commissioner Lori Chibonette. All of them have received the emergency use author authorization to go along with that medication. Now, currently, remdesivir can only be administered through an IV. New Hampshire DHHS officials have told hospitals that it will be up to them to prioritize who gets the medication from their limited supply. Reporting live in Concord, Tyler Dumont, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Coronavirus in New Hampshire, key information. Let's take a look. And COVID-19 in New Hampshire. There are 3,299 number of people in New Hampshire who have tested positive for COVID-19. 1,388,000 two number of people in the United States who have tested positive. 150 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 326 number of people who have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. An 83,715 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. This map right here of New Hampshire shows you current cases of COVID-19 in towns and cities. Salem, 104. This shows the total cases in towns and cities of New Hampshire. Salem, 197. This chart here, new cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple, daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange, new hospitalizations, and in the red, deaths. This chart here, current cases in the purple, total current COVID-19 cases, and in the orange, current hospitalizations. In this chart here, total positive COVID-19 cases in the orange, total hospitalizations in the red, deaths, and in the blue, recovered. 
This chart here shows you by age group. This chart here shows you by female and male. And this chart here shows you risk information. This chart here shows you race slash ethnicity of cases. And this chart here shows you percent of New Hampshire population. And your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, and difficult breathing. How it spreads. And prevention tips. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into national news. In national news, calls for federal action on social distancing on flights. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Again, the images and, of course, the questions tonight for the airlines who all seem to have different policies, no central set of rules, and some passengers are rightly concerned. ABC's Gio Benitez covers aviation. Passengers all over the country are sharing photos of flights they believe are too crowded during a pandemic. The number of domestic flights down nearly 70 percent, but more people are beginning to fly. Now tonight, calls for federal action on social distancing. Airlines have imposed their own policies, but they're not all the same. American Airlines says it is blocking half of all middle seats. United says it is trying to keep a seat open beside every passenger, but doesn't guarantee it. And Delta says it is only booking half of first class and 60% of the main cabin. Senator Richard Blumenthal says the government should step in. Do you think this is something that Congress would take up? If the Department of Transportation fails to do its job, Congress should do it for them. And David, tonight every major airline tells us if you don't feel comfortable, they will change your flight, even if you've already boarded the plane. David, all right, you. Thank you. Wait. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Coronavirus updates. China to ramp up COVID-19 testing aimed at fears of a resurgence. China plans to step up testing nationwide to prevent a rebound in the epidemic. Today's biggest developments. California police arrest a woman for selling non-approved test kits. China to ramp up testing aimed at fears of a resurgence. Russia reports just under 10,000 new cases. Italy approves 60 billion settlement package. And Japan lifts state of emergency in 39 prefectures. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into business news. Dow features fall 200 points as markets set to extend this week's steep losses. U.S. stocks features dipped early Thursday after concerns over the U.S. economy and the market's overall volatile spark another sell-off off in the equities a day earlier. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go to weather and traffic. We're going to begin with the weather first. Let's take a look at the radar right now. And here's a look at that radar for all of you. As you can see, it is nice and clear in New Hampshire. Going to be a good day in New Hampshire today. Your weather right now is sunny, 40 degrees. Weather for today, sunny to partly cloudy, high 68 degrees. Winds west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And now let's take a look at your traffic. Let's see how the traffic is looking like on those roadways in New Hampshire. And here's a look at that traffic for all of you. 
and Hanneker, smooth sailing, Hopkinton, smooth sailing, Bo Pembroke, Concord, all smooth sailing, Chichester, smooth sailing, Epsom, smooth sailing, with some medium pace traffic, Northward, smooth sailing, with a little spot of medium pace traffic, Lee, smooth sailing, with a little spot of medium and stop traffic. Durham, medium pace traffic with some smooth sailing and stopped and slow pace traffic. Rochester, smooth sailing. Dover, smooth sailing. Portsmouth, smooth sailing. Maine, all smooth sailing. Rye, smooth sailing. Northampton, smooth sailing. Hampton, smooth sailing. Seabrook, smooth sailing. Into the border, Massachusetts. On 101, all smooth sailing on 101 with some construction. And then in the Epping area, you're seeing some medium and slow pace traffic. And then near Exeter, you're seeing some medium pace traffic. Hooks at Manchester, all smooth sailing around the Manchester airport, smooth sailing. Bedford, smooth sailing with some medium pace traffic, Amherst, smooth sailing, and Milford, smooth sailing. Merrimack, Nashua, into the border of Massachusetts, all smooth sailing. Nashua, Milford, all smooth sailing with some medium pace traffic. Manchester, Derry, Windham, Salem, into the border of Massachusetts, all smooth sailing. And that is a look at your traffic this morning. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into New Hampshire Life segment. In today's New Hampshire Life segment, Rally for Life going virtual. Hope from home to be held online in June. The virtual event is June 7th. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jean Mackin. Beltate's building supply has been classified in essential business, and we take this responsibility very seriously. Now you have the option to place your orders via phone or email to orders at beltates.com. Okay, we're... Looks like we're following a little technical difficulties right now, I believe. Sorry about the little technical difficulty glitch there. When you cut lawns for a living, reliability matters. The Kubota commercial lineup with purpose-built mowers... The Relay for Life is pivoting this year, taking steps to go virtual because this event must go on. It's to celebrate our cancer survivors and caregivers, um, remember those that we've lost through cancer, and, and really empower everybody to continue the fight. So Hope From Home will be held on Sunday, June 7th, mainly on Facebook. The American Cancer Society is asking more than 50 participating groups in New Hampshire, Maine, and Massachusetts to get creative and get pledges in new ways this year. Ask your friends and family for donations, uh, try to figure out and be creative for some sort of virtual fundraiser. Um, you know, there's all sorts of great ideas out there. The people that, you know, have taken pledges for walking a certain amount of miles or biking um, a certain distance. Relay for Life volunteer Alexis Hartnett is up to the challenge. This is definitely different for us. We've never done anything like this before. So this could be a great idea for people who've never even done the Relay for Life before. This is a great time, um, definitely with everything going on right now, to get out in, um, you know, your backyard or the community around you and just kind of, you know, get some miles in with your kids, um, your family members, your pets. Just log on to RelayForLife.org to learn how you can raise hope from home. Jean Mackin, WMUR News Not. Okay, sounds like a good event there. And it will be virtual this year. And let's go into a cooking segment right now. Cook's Corner Pie Dough. Let's take a look at that video from WMUR. Sorry about that. We had a little technical difficulty. Looks like we're back. Let's go into your cooking segment now. Oh, 
how you doing? Uh, my name is Guy Tino. I'm sitting here at the Northeast Cafe in New Boston, uh, cooking breakfast for people to come and pick up. Uh, I'm going to make show you how to make some pie dough. Uh, let's go in the kitchen. Okay, so here we have a half a cup of butter, a half a cup of shortening, a tablespoon of salt, two cups of water, four cups of flour. I'm going to start with the flour and the butter and the shortening. That butter's been softening for, I don't know, about an hour. First thing we'll do, try to make what's called like a, it's called a coarse meal. So we're just going to sort of squish in this butter and shortening until it makes a consistent uh, meal uh, texture. Should hold together it's like wet sand sort of holds sort of holds together. And then we'll add the water slowly, fold it a couple times, and we'll have pie dough. Just put in the water half at a time. Okay, this is all mixed. Um, as you can see it's not sticky, uh, but it's certainly not dry. If you work it hard enough, it will stick. That's why I always have a uh, little flour for dusting, a little table flour to keep uh, keep it dusted and from sticking. And I'm going to break it into uh, seven ounce balls. We'll let that rest uh, for about an hour, and then we'll come back and roll it. We have the table. The table is pretty well dusted. The dough itself is pretty well dusted with flour. Now we can just roll it out. Well, no, I roll this pretty thin. And uh, if it fights you, just add a little bit of flour. I like to keep flipping it around. And uh, you can roll it as thin or as thick as you like. Uh, and then you can go ahead and make your pie crust. That's a nice, we make quiche with that one. And, uh, or you can have a chicken pot pie. Uh, and you can use this dough for anything. It's a really good, simple pie dough. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the Northeast Cafe, go to northeastcafe.com. Uh, if you would like some more tips on cooking, uh, click on the Cooking with Tom tab. You can also see our delivery menu. We have an oven-ready um, meal program, and the menu's on there. Order weekly. Um, we also have chicken pot pies and brisket and, uh, and meats by the pound also available for delivery on the weekends. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and have a good day. Okay, there you go. Now we know how to make pie dough. Very cool indeed. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into entertainment news. Find out why people think the queen is ready to leave her royal duties. Let's take a listen to that video from Entertainment Tonight. in quarantine. Wow, what a character. Last night, Harry showed up on the BBC to celebrate veterans. It's the sixth time he's made an on-camera appearance since the lockdown began. And we can't forget this video, which Harry himself shot in honor of Archie's first birthday. See that Archie's book club sticker? The book was a gift from Oprah. Bravo! Certainly in the last few days, we've seen a flurry of activity from Prince Harry. Harry and Meghan obviously needed some time to settle into their new lives. I'm told that they feel a great sense of freedom and they're enjoying being able to do things a bit more on their terms. Back in the UK, Harry's 94-year-old grandmother remains in isolation at Windsor Castle with 98-year-old Prince Philip. There's been speculation the Queen will step down from her royal duties and Charles and William stepping up indefinitely. Never give up. Never despair. Well, palace sources are very keen to play down rumours of the Queen stepping down, retiring, and um, even scaling back. But the reality is, is that we have seen Prince Charles and um, the Cambridges stepping up to the plate more now than ever before. <laughs> <laughs> William and Kate are not just Zooming, they've really put their kids out there. Actually, during this pandemic, we've seen more of the royal children than I think at any other point. I mean, the Queen cannot go on forever. Um, and I think what we really are seeing is what the future is going to look like. Hi, Harris. The new protocol seems to be more lighthearted and fun. 
Even Kate's brother James Middleton got into the act, shaving the beard he's had for the past seven years and sharing the quarantine makeover on Instagram. There we go. Okay, and there you go. We'll have to wait and see what happens. And hey, now let's take a look at those celebrity birthdays for today. Let's see which celebrities are celebrating a birthday today. And happy birthday to all of these celebrities. We hope they have a wonderful birthday and a wonderful day. And thank you for joining us for this Thursday edition of Good Morning New Hampshire. Have a great rest of your Thursday, everyone. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of Good Morning New Hampshire. Goodbye, everyone.